We are going to go through a barbell Jefferson scale focusing on spinal segmentation. So we're going to just work on the top half of the body movement, avoiding working into the lower limb area. So with this exercise, you would generally see people perform it through spinal flexion, but then followed through with pelvic tilting in order to get further down, but also challenge more of the posterior chain. So hamstrings, back of the calves, and then they would come up. We're not going to go to that point beyond which we then start to tilt at the pelvis and engage this lower portion through movement. We're just going to work that top portion. So before I give you a demonstration, a few pointers is in terms of how you set up with your feet, a comfortable deadlift stance. I am going to say play with a degree of knee bending. I personally find with this exercise going with a slight bend in the knee falling slightly at the pelvis and holding that position to then perform the exercise suits me a lot better than trying to be completely locked out with the knees at the pelvis. But it's a personal preference and it's something that you'll want to explore and play with. As I mentioned, this is focused on spinal segmentation. So the intent is very much to get good at working on individually segmenting each spinal vertebrae as I perform this exercise. So I'm going to give you a demonstration now of one rep. There's a couple of ways you can set this up. Um, I'll show you the first demo and then I'll also talk through what I'm thinking, what I'm paying attention to, and this will help you understand a bit better how you can approach the exercise in terms of variables, in terms of such as how much load you decide to put on the bar, for example. So, one way is to set up how I would for my deadlift and actually deadlift the bar off to the floor and then start from this standing position. I begin to segmentally flex from the neck and then I'm thinking vertebrae by vertebrae. I'm taking my time as I work my way down. I'm trying to feel out all the connective tissues between each vertebrae that I'm intentionally trying to flex and open up. So all the spaces between and around each vertebrae that I'm opening up, I want to feel that connective tissue being lengthened. I want to feel how it's responding, how it's tolerating the load of the barbell as I continue to travel down the spine. And then when I get to my end, I'm going to segmentally think about extending vertebrae by vertebrae. So I'm in my lower lumbar region, taking my time, trying to again, feel out the connective tissues that I'm extending through on the spinal muscles. So as you notice, I took my time to segmentally work my way through spinal flexion. I'm trying to feel all the connective tissues around the areas where I'm lengthening, I'm rounding my back. As I'm going through that motion, I'm also being mindful of what's happening down here. As I go through, if I start to feel the pelvis want to tilt, if I start to feel the hamstrings lengthening, it may be a telltale that I'm starting to compensate a little bit and I'm not getting as much of that movement now from spinal flexion, but other parts, pelvic tilting as mentioned earlier. So as I perform this exercise, I would generally start with a conservative weight, something that doesn't challenge my ability to move well, but then when I'm building up, I'm paying attention to the finer details, such as how the connective tissues from top to bottom of the spine handle the load. Are there areas where I feel a lot weaker? Those areas I may feel a bit weaker, may be a sign that I can't build the weight any further because that area may struggle a bit more. Now, uh, another way to perform this is actually from the deadlift position down here. So once again, if I was to try to eliminate the pelvic tilting, I'm going to want to set up in a way where I don't feel I've all of a sudden anteriorly tilted the pelvis in order to extend the spine. I actually want to promote the opposite. So I want to posteriorly tilt the pelvis, drop the back of the pelvis, in order to promote more flexion through the spine. And then from here, I'm going to lower myself down and I can adjust microdoses. So if I don't feel I'm in the right place, 
I can adjust here. So I'm rounding, I'm opening up the shoulder blades. I'm moving my weight on my feet to try and figure out where's the best position I can feel engagement of my spinal muscles to perform the lift. I build tension and then from here I lift and then segmentally vertebrae by vertebrae I'm slowly bringing myself up and then working myself down vertebrae by vertebrae. And as you notice, I probably move a lot slower compared to how you would see this performed conventionally. And once again, this is because I'm focusing the exercise on spinal segmentation. The majority of us should be able to move most of our vertebrae being 24 of them. So taking the time to feel out the spaces between all those 24 vertebrae means that this is generally exercise. I wouldn't be going down and up out of within the space of a few seconds. So this is again, one, mindfully move slow in order to also feel those finer details that you want to pay attention to. And now lastly, one other little thing you can do for the last variation is as you're having to now work on more depth to take the bar from the floor, if that was a challenging setup, what I would generally get my clients to do is elevate the plates, either on a rack or a few more plates and then what that means is that when you perform the lift, if you're limited a little bit by tension on the back of the legs, pelvic limitation, rather than taking the barbell from so far down below, you could be a bit further up and try to perform the lift from here, for example. And then progressions would be gradually as spinal mobility gets better, challenge yourself by going a bit further down, for example.